Moke responded just like you knew he would as a as a leader of this team, as an adult. He's got a high motor. I think you one thing that you when you turn on the film and you watch him, you're gonna, you're gonna say, hey, that guy plays hard. I'll tell you a funny story. I was at the University of Michigan, and uh, I don't know if we watched more, more, uh, more of anyone else than Anoki Moala when we were at the University of Michigan. We kept watching him over and over, and where this guy would would fit. And uh, Coach Madison's son Brian was the um, uh, uh, was an assistant coach at Penn High School, and really thought this guy was special. And of course, we didn't take him at the University of Michigan, and. Uh, come full circle, and he's here at uh, Indiana State. First time that we saw Anoke um, in the weight room and just the way he moved, you know, we saw a guy that was obviously a big, strong kid that had some explosion and a lot of power um, and felt like um, if if we could put him down up front, put his hand in the ground and, and give him a chance to, to come off the ball, uh, with his hand down, uh, that he was gonna, you know, have a chance to be a pretty dynamic player. And again, is he, he's a he was, we saw him as a as a bigger kid um, that had a good deal of athleticism, but again, a lot of power, explosion, burst, quick twitch. What we try to preach in this room is that it's more important for the success of the unit than it is my own success. And, and that's 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 the type of person Anoka is. He's not selfish at all. He's more concerned about the well-being. Uh, of the group than he is of himself. He's he's always a guy that, like, off the field, on the field, if you need him, if you have questions, he's always going to be there for you. The type of leader he is, he's not really, like, a leader that wants to be heard from his voice. He's a leader by his actions. I'm more of a leader uh, by example. I'm not much of a, you know, yeller, or talker, uh, but I know that, uh, as, a, as the team progresses, I have to be able to speak, you know, when times get tough and uh, I gotta be able to voice that, you know, I'm not much, much of a speaker when it comes to my team. I just do the work and and try to lead by example. I have a very high opinion of Anoke. I'm around him quite a bit. I see how he comes to work every day. I see how respect that he has amongst his peers. And I know that uh, the teams we play, you know, obviously, I feel the same, you know, that he's a, he's a tremendous player. I warned him, okay, don't fall into the trap. You know, don't fall into the trap of believing that you're as good as you can be. You know, I've coached football a long time, and I don't have to really worry about that with an okay, but, but you always got to remind guys that you got where you're at for a reason. Continue to do those things. All the rewards and accolades will all come later, but the most important thing is the success of the team. And that's, that's, uh, that's what we preach, and, and that's what Anoka believes in. I want to be able to be perfect every time, rather than, oh, you're perfect for two reps, and then the next two reps, you know, you're not doing as well. So I want to try and keep that consistency, even like the tiniest things. And then what I believe is everything else will take care of itself. So if you do little things like certain drills, do it to, to perfection that everything else will come along. He had to battle through that, that wrist injury. It was a freak injury. He's actually trying to recover a fumble uh, and went down and put his, his hand on the ground and, and snapped the bone on his wrist. He responded just like, like you want him to. Uh, you know, he stayed actively involved uh, with, with, his, with the program uh, and then became another coach out there for me. Initially, I mean, it was hard for him. I mean, it's something that you, when you commit and sacrifice so much time to affecting your craft and trying to be great as he is um, and had done up to that point, you kind of had that taken away from you and it's, you know, we all kind of struggle with that. It's always a shock on him the first, the, the first, when it first happens. Uh, but Anoka responded just like you knew he would as a, as a leader of this team, as an adult. And uh, he, he just kept his head down and kept fighting through it. It was hard uh, because football is kind of like your getaway. Um, to get away from like the real world, it's like kind of a stress reliever. I was pretty low at that point. The hardest part was just not being able to do anything 
like just like so I had a cast on the hardest part was just like I feel like a work out legs, you know, but they said your stitches have to heal. So like, just, uh, it tested my patience a lot. So um, the hardest part would just be like, oh, I feel like I could do something, but I just had to trust that process and uh, just wait my time before I could uh, rush into anything and re-injure my, uh, my wrist again. I try to keep myself involved with the team. Um, I'd go to practice every day, uh, try to help the young, uh, just like the younger guys or the guys that are playing then defensive line wise and just try to keep myself involved so like my mind isn't wondering about, you know, I wish I could do this and that. Just try to help the other guys and it'll better the team. And that's probably like one of our best seasons so far. So I'm happy that happened. You know, you're, you're not gonna fill that void that Anoke left with one guy. And I think that our guys really um, rallied behind that and, and kind of, you know, everybody uses the, you know, next man up and this, and you know, sometimes you can say that and it's a feel good saying, but but I think that what you have to understand is with the production that, that he had had up to that point or the production that we expected him to have throughout the season, we just now needed to get that production from now a mix of about two, three, four other guys. That was the thing with my confidence. I didn't know if I was ready or not. And he was always there to help me or if I didn't understand something because he, he, been, he was there before and he actually knows how it was. So he just kept me motivated and gave me the confidence that I needed. We could see the potential that Chris Reed had, the talent that he had. Uh, so I would just always be in his ear every day, whether it's in practice or, or for the meetings. I'd be like, like, you can do that, you know what I mean? I'd help him with little technique steps or whatever. I mean, he, he knew most of it, but there was just little things he could polish up on. And I would always keep reiterating that you're a good enough player. Like, stop, stop being so shy and stuff. You know, you're a good player. Just bring out that confidence, and you'll be fine. Seeing somebody go through the rehab process like him, he was dedicated and determined to get back on the field. No matter if it was waking up early to go get treatment or staying after late, he was always dedicated to get back on the field from his injury. Coming back. Uh, you know, you just saw a guy that was determined. And, uh, you know, I never I never see Anoke, you know, hang his head and feel sorry for himself. He just, he just goes to work. If he can stay healthy, which he has been, uh, he can be as dominating a player in our conference. You want, you want your players to, to maximize their window of opportunity, whatever that is. And, and for a, to see a guy uh, come back from a setback like that um, and and the way that he handled it, the way he approached it, the way he went about his work moving forward, uh, and then to see him go out and have the amount of success that he did have for us last year. Uh, like I said, just real rewarding as a coach and you're just happy for him. First and foremost, I was happy for Anoka and the first he got to play the entire season and he was having success. It was a big part of our success on defense. I really had to limit him all the way up until the Kansas game. I guess you can say I was at the right spot at the right time. A rush three, ball pops out! And it's recovered by the Sycamores in the end zone for a touchdown! It was surprising. Um, there were like two or three of my teammates that ran past the ball kind of deal. And I was, I was thinking they were going to score. Um, but start off with a, a great play from Caleb Brewer, the other uh, defensive end that I play along with. Uh, he got the sack and the strip, and the ball just kind of rolled in the end zone, and like two, other, two three other teammates ran by it, and I kind of just fell on it and cradled. So. First and foremost, if you're going to play the, the sport of football, you better, you better like collisions. You know, football is not a contact sport. Football is a collision sport. And, um, you know, he's one of those guys that uh, uh, doesn't mind mixing it up. and. Uh, in fact, enjoys it. Uh, I, I think that we know what he, you know, what he brings to to, to our team, uh, both from an energy and and uh, you know work ethic standpoint, and then obviously his production. You can't you can't put a price tag on that. So, uh, just very happy for for Anoke, and and it's fun to, to again see him go out there and have success because you know how much work he puts into it. You know how important it is to him, uh, and you want to see guys like that succeed. And I really took the sport for granted and uh, getting injured and sitting out that year and seeing others play 
um, I realized how blessed I was in being able to just play the game of football here at Indiana State. You can say how much of a blessing it is, but until you experience it and you're out for an entire season, uh, you really don't know that feeling. I do want to try and compete at the next level. I want to play uh, professional ball, whether that's Canadian or the NFL.